This is going to be one of your most important concepts that you need to understand in order to trade successfully in the market. The reason being is because how can you confidently place trades and not have a clear understanding of where price is heading to? And that is where your concept of order flow comes into place. So when you look at advanced order flow, it focuses on two types of players within the market and they are your aggressive players and passive players. Aggressive players being the ones who market execute and passive players being the one who place limit orders. And based on how the two players interact within the markets, that is how you would get your movement in price. Now, as you would have guessed, for advanced order flow, you would need the footprint chart and more advanced software, but that is not necessarily needed. And in fact, if you follow these four criteria when determining your order flow, this is all you need. Your basic candlestick chart is all you will need. As long as you follow these four criteria, that is necessary for your order flow. So let's begin with our first criteria, and that is the higher time frame direction. Now, when I say higher time frame direction, this doesn't necessarily mean basic market structure, where in this bullish scenario, you have higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and higher highs because you understand that price doesn't move this way. Hence why it is called basic market structure. It is just a general idea of what to expect in a trending bullish market. The proper way that price moves is through advanced market structure. So here, instead of going from higher lows to higher highs, you would get higher lows, higher highs, and then a lower low, and then a higher high. For example, and that is your advanced market structure. Even though price creates a lower low here, that doesn't mean that the price has reversed from here. This was simply, just a sweep to accumulate more long positions before distributing it higher and taking out this buy side liquidity. And that is how the markets will always move. If your higher time frame direction is bullish, any lows that gets violated should only ideally be seen as a liquidity sweep to accumulate more positions before distributing it higher. Do not get mistaken for a reversal. And that is the overall framework for your order flow. All of your ideas would be based on your higher time frame direction. Now, now, your second criteria is your higher time frame PD array. So what do I mean by that? Where is price currently reacting off of? If you look at this segment in price over here, you are in a bullish scenario. Price retraces and comes back into this higher time frame PD array. At this current point in time, what could you anticipate for price to do? Give you a bullish confirmation on the lower time frame and then distribute higher to realign with your higher time frame bullish direction. You would anticipate for this discount array to stay respected to continue your bullish order flow. Now, even though you are anticipating for a discount array to stay respected and you would go down onto a lower time frame to look for that bullish confirmation, what is the point in doing that if you don't even know where you are going to target? And that is where your third criteria for the order flow comes into play. Your order flow becomes much more clearer when you have draws on liquidity. For example here, if price came into this imbalance over here, for example, you would have this buy side liquidity to become your drawn liquidity because your overall higher time frame direction is bullish. So you would anticipate for old highs to be disrespected and old lows to stay respected. If old lows get disrespected, ideally it should only be a wick and be seen as a liquidity sweep. So that is your third criteria for order flow. Your order flow only becomes clear when you know where you are heading for with reasoning. If you want to know the technical definition behind draws on liquidity, it is because when price comes to this imbalance and it accumulates long positions, in a market transaction, there always has to be two parties, a buyer who's willing to buy from a seller and a seller who's willing to sell to a buyer. So as you would have guessed, on top of old highs, they are your buy side liquidity in the form of sell limits and buy stops. Those who went long here to distribute price high within this leg, they could only take profit when there is counterparty liquidity to pair up their long positions with. That is the only way they could exit out of the market with their take profits. And as you would have guessed, the bulk of those sellers would be resting above these old highs, which is your buy side liquidity in a bullish market direction. Hence why drawn liquidity is extremely important when determining your overall order flow. And the fourth criteria is what we have talked about already. Price can't move in basic market structure. It always has to have some sort of a sweep to accumulate more positions. Because if you think of it from a drawn liquidity standpoint, it is the same, but it's slightly inverted. So now, when we had drawn liquidity, instead of long players distributing their positions to the short players, this is where price would sweep out sell side liquidity, which is where you have your sell stops and your buy limits to accumulate buy positions and then distribute it higher. 
And that wraps up the criteria needed when determining your overall order flow. When you have these four criteria, it becomes very easy to determine whether the order flow is bullish or bearish. So if we do a breakdown of the charts here, what do you notice in this current price action? You have your sell side liquidity here. And what does price do to that sell side liquidity? It has a strong sweep, sweeping this sell side liquidity. Now, as you would have imagined, what is below the sell side liquidity? Buy limits and sell stops. So price sweeping this sell side liquidity, all it was doing was accumulating long positions to go from a sell program into a buy program after sweeping this sell side liquidity. Ideally, whenever you want to see a reversal, you would want to see some sort of liquidity get swept in your opposing direction. So if we were anticipating for a bullish market reversal, you want to see some form of sell side get swept. Vice versa, if you were anticipating a bearish reversal, you want to see some form of a buy side liquidity get swept. So now, when you had this sweep on sell side liquidity, what do you get here? This is your swing high. It gives you a market structure break with heavy displacement. And that is where you get your market reversal. Bearing in mind, that we are on the daily time frame, which is my higher time frame direction. So now the higher time frame direction is currently bullish. What do you notice here with all of these failure swing highs? They form your trend line liquidity, also known as your low resistance liquidity. Here you have your overall high. This becomes your draw on liquidity. So that is another criteria met for determining your order flow. So now what do you have left? Higher time frame PD array, right? Because remember, you had your sweep and then your market reversal. Now the direction is bullish. And you also have your draw on liquidity in the form of these trend and liquidity, but we're using the overall high. So now the only thing that's left is your higher time frame PD arrays. With your higher time frame PD arrays, because we had this market reversal to go bullish, you want to see discount arrays stay respected, premium arrays become disrespected. And that is exactly what you have here. This was a premium array in the form of a swing high. It gets disrespected heavily with heavy displacement. Price then retraces back into this imbalance. It's a very small imbalance, but it's an imbalance nonetheless. And that is your discount array. Price then has an aggressive move higher again. So essentially, this discount array became respected. And that heavy displacement higher took out this premium array in the form of an old high. As well as this in the form of an old high. So premium arrays are constantly being disrespected and discount arrays are constantly being respected. So what does that imply? We are in a bullish market. Down candles should support price higher. So here, that minor retracement created a bullish order block. This should support price to go higher. Vice versa if we were in a bearish scenario. Up candles should support price to go lower. But for this example, because we're in a bullish market, we want to see discount arrays be respected and down candles to support price higher. So now you have exercised the four criteria for determining order flow what can you confidently say? We are in a bullish order flow. The order flow is currently bullish. And because the order flow is bullish, this is where you could start to anticipate for the next number of candles to give you that bullish movement. And this is also where you could start to look for your entries. So let's play price out and see what it does. As you can see, discount arrays are still being respected and premium arrays are still being disrespected. This draw on liquidity gets taken out now. So now you will look for a new drawn liquidity. Bring price out. You can see what I was talking about earlier with your first criteria, higher time frame direction. It is not basic market structure. It is advanced market structure. And any old lows that get disrespected in this scenario should only be seen as a liquidity sweep. This should not be mistaken for a reversal because your order flow is clearly bullish. Price can't just move in higher lows and higher highs, higher lows and higher highs. It will eventually run out of liquidity, so it will have to sweep some form of a sell side liquidity to accumulate longs before distributing it higher. Think of it like a car. The car is constantly moving up here. Eventually, it will run out of petrol, so it will have to come back to a petrol station to pump petrol, right? Before it could continue on its journey. And that is what you get with your old lows in this scenario. Your old lows being your sell side liquidity is your petrol station. So here, price comes back to this petrol station, pumps up petrol. And now you could expect it to distribute higher and continue with its journey. It's a very silly analogy, but hopefully it helps you understand the bigger image. So here you get this liquidity sweep, paired up with the fact that it comes into this imbalance. This is what you call a high probability imbalance or fair value gap. Now, 
there will be future videos going over high probability imbalances or fair value gaps, but for now, just assume that this was a high probability imbalance. So you would anticipate for this to stay protected. Now, if we continue price, as you can see, that this wasn't a reversal and price just continued going higher. Here, price comes down again. Now, this will throw a lot of people off. You would think this is a reversal, but to me, this was simply just a deeper retracement into one of these discount arrays. Right? If you draw out your range, this is simply into the discount of the range. Even though, yes, we had displacement here and it took out this old low, I am not anticipating for this to be a full reversal yet. If you are having trouble understanding why, all you have to do is jump higher onto the higher time frame. We are still bullish on the even higher time frame, which is your weekly, as opposed to your daily. All price was doing here took out an all time high. So after taking out liquidity, you would anticipate a retracement. Because this was an all time high, you would anticipate possibly an even deeper retracement than usual. And on the higher time frame, being your weekly, this was simply just to come into this weekly imbalance. So here on the daily, you can refine it to this imbalance. And like I said, it is also within the discount of the overall range. Now, from here, this is your second criteria. Remember, higher time frame PD array. You want to see discount arrays stay respected and premium arrays to become disrespected if your order flow was bullish. What do you have here? You have buy side liquidity. And this is your draw on liquidity. And again, this could be seen as a sweep as well. That is your liquidity sweep. So you have your four criteria in play. Your high time frame direction is still bullish. PD arrays, you have a discount array here and a premium array here. Your drawn liquidity being your buy side liquidity. This is the next high to get violated if we was to continue in the bullish direction. And lastly, you have your sweep. So here, you have your sweep. So this is where you can start to drop down onto the lower time frame and look for your confirmation for your entries. So let's drop down onto the hourly. You can see that the direction on the hourly is bearish and that is to be expected. Because on the higher time frame, all it was doing was retracing into a discount array. So now, let's play price up and look for that bullish confirmation. This discount array could possibly be disrespected, and if it does, then it's fair enough. That is why you have your lower time frame bullish confirmations. But now, well, let's continue. So yeah, you have your sweep. Because price is fractal, the same criteria that you used for your higher time frame order flow. Remember these four criteria is the same criteria you could use on your lower time frame. On the hourly, you get a sweep on sell side liquidity. What is it doing? Switching from a sell program to a buy program, accumulating long positions. So now your second criteria, you want to see discount arrays stay respected, premium arrays be disrespected, and so on. Third criteria, draws on liquidity. Here, you have multiple draws on liquidity. And the important thing here is your draw on liquidity on the lower time frame is aligned with your higher time frame overall draw on liquidity. That is where your highest probability trades will come into play. So here you have your higher time frame overall draw on liquidity being this buy side liquidity. So you will look for buy side liquidity on the lower time frame in the form of old highs. So let's use this as our buy side liquidity. Once this gets taken out, you can anticipate for this one to go, this high, this high, and then eventually your overall high. So what can you do here? You have a minor bullish displacement here. If you watched my market maker video, this is simply your accumulation level to become new distribution level on the buy side curve of this market maker buy model, right? From here, because this is your new distribution level, this is where you could have your entry. Your stop loss could be somewhere here. And what would you look to target? This buy side liquidity, this buy side liquidity. You have these low resistance trendline liquidity all relatively equal highs, and they become another draw on liquidity. So once this high gets violated, you can look to target this, and then eventually your overall draw on liquidity. But for the sake of this video, let's not focus on taking partials, and just focus on taking either full TP here, or at this overall draw on liquidity. Let's play price out and see what it does. So here, price came deeper past this accumulation level, and that is fine. As long as it doesn't violate, this low, then our long idea is still validated. All it was doing was coming deeper into these bullish order blocks. That is where you have your displacement. Price took out this buy side liquidity. 
this is where you can have your second entry. Because remember the second criteria for determining order flow. If your order flow is bullish, discount arrays ideally you want to see stay protected. And again, minor displacement. Look at how it aligns with that accumulation level. Old accumulation to new distribution. You could have another entry here. Stop loss around there. Targeting the same thing. Price took some time to hit our take profit, but eventually it hits it. Why? Because on the higher time frame, you have already confidently determined that your higher time frame order flow is bullish. So you will look for your draws on liquidity and your premium arrays to be disrespected. So here are two trades, one for nearly 2R, one for 4.3R. And that is an extremely simple way to determine where price is going to head for. Solely based on your four criteria, right? Higher time frame direction, higher time frame PDRA, drawn liquidity, and your sweeps. One thing to point out as well, even though I use two time frames here, my higher time frame being the daily and my lower time frame being the hourly, this doesn't mean that you can't use the hourly as your higher time frame and your five minute as the lower time frame, right? Because if you look on the hourly, price is fractal, right? So it follows the same characteristics. Here, you have your sell side liquidity. Price sweeps that sell side liquidity. And again, it gives you the same characteristics. You have your market structure shift here. With displacement, price is respecting discount arrays, disrespecting premium arrays, and you have your draws on liquidity here. So here, when price comes down into your discount arrays, at this imbalance, you could drop down onto the lower time frame, being your five minute now. Look for the same thing. Yeah. It breaks that, giving you your market structure break. Entry off of that. Stop loss below there. And targeting your hourly, which is your high time frame in this scenario, draw on liquidity. The reason I didn't look at this price segment here is because it was during Asian session. So that concludes this video on determining your order flow. Remember your four criteria. They are extremely important when determining whether the market is in a bullish order flow or a bearish order flow. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. If not, like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.